Good morning, Bitcoins. The price of... <laughs> Today is Sunday, May 24th, 2020. My name is Thomas Hunt. This is the World Crypto Network. And the price of Bitcoin is down 1.19% in the last 24 hours, with a last of 9,087, a high of 9,300, and a low of 8,993. That's $1.00. That's one dollar for eleven thousand and five satoshis. I'd buy that for a dollar. Volume is low, but it's Sunday morning, and that's around three thousand bitcoins trading hands. Market continues to lean long, with seventy-eight percent heading that direction. Hello to everyone in the chat. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and a share as we start to warm up this Sunday big book show. I've got a stack of books to read to you. It's ridiculous. I just kept pulling more books. It's Sunday. Who cares? Let's read books. All right. There I am. Sunday. All right, Bukowski. We got to start at the right places. Got to clear your throat before you read. The face of a political candidate on a street billboard. There he is. Not too many hangovers. Not too many fights with women. Not too many flat tires. Never a thought of suicide. Not more than three toothaches. Never missed a meal. Never in jail. Never in love. Seven pairs of shoes. A son in college. A car one year old. Insurance policies. A very green lawn. Garbage cans with tight lids. He'll be elected. <laughs> I like that one. And I like the title of this book too. Play the piano drunk like a percussion instrument until the fingers begin to bleed a bit. Charles Bukowski. Let's see. We're going to start off heavy. We've got... Uh, the Book of the Five Rings. You don't have a copy of The Book of the Five Rings yet? What? What's wrong with you? Uh, anyway, Barnes & Noble has been cranking these out in various uh, affordable, always on sale, as if they printed too many editions. And uh, I bought this one. <laughs> so here we go, randomly from the Books of One Ring of Five Rings. This is the uh, classic text of Samurai Sword Strategy by Miyamoto Musashi. Of course, you should know that. Uh, but as anyway, samurai strategy, you're on. Here we go. One cut. You will be able to win using the one cut. It will be hard to achieve this without learning strategy thoroughly. If you practice well in this way, strategy will flow from your mind, and you will have the ability to win according to the will of your mind. You should practice thoroughly. You must consider the enemy as if he is one of your own soldiers. As such, you will command him to move around according to your intentions. When you are of a mind that you order the enemy as you would order your soldier, you will become the commander of your enemy. You should master this principle. Finally, in all types of strategy, you must assume this combat posture and make it your regular posture. You must study this well. Assume a posture with head held erect, not with head bowed, not with head hanging, and not with head turned up, down, or sideways. Do not furrow your brow. Do not roll your eyebrows or eyeballs or blink your eyes, but narrow your eyelids slightly. Keep your face composed and keep the line of your nose straight. Flare your nostrils slightly. 
hold the back of your neck straight. Infuse your neck with strength, and let it travel down by way of your shoulders to the rest of your body. Keep the back erect, and do not allow the buttocks to protrude. Infuse your legs with strength from knees to toes. Extend your abdomen so that you do not bend at the hips. Tighten your accompanying sword in your belt against your stomach. This is called wedging. Posture in Strategy From the Book of the Five Rings This is, of course, the uh, Tao Te Ching. It's a good book to read on Sunday by Lao Tzu. This is a nice, uh, technically a a big book uh, for today. It's good size. Uh, It has pretty pictures and uh, characters. So here we are, 41. The wise student hears of the Tao and practices it diligently. The average student hears of the Tao and gives it thought now and again. The foolish student hears of the Tao and laughs aloud. If there were no laughter, the Tao would not be what it is. Hence it is said, the bright path seems dim. Going forward seems like retreat. The easy way seems hard. The highest virtue seems empty. Great purity seems sullied. A wealth of virtue seems inadequate. Real strength of virtue seems frail. Real virtue seems unreal. The perfect square has no corners. Great talents ripen late. The highest notes are hard to hear. The greatest form has no shape. The Tao is hidden and without name. The Tao alone nourishes and brings everything. To fulfillment. 41. The uh, Tao Te Ching. Lao Tzu. But wait, there's more. This is, it's not how good you are, it's how good you want to be. The world's best-selling book by Paul Arden. The per, <laughs> the perso, it's a mistake. The perso who doesn't make mistakes is unlikely to make anything. Benjamin Franklin said, "I've I haven't failed. I've had ten thousand ideas that didn't work." Thomas Edison said, "Of the two hundred light bulbs that didn't work, every failure told me something that I was able to incorporate." into the next attempt. Theater director Joan Littlewood said, If we don't get lost, we'll never find a new route. All of them understood that failures and false starts are a precondition of success. At the last company I worked for, you would be not fired for being wrong, but you would be fired for not having initiative. It had a positive attitude towards mistakes. It was a great company. Failure was a major contributor to its success. Failure was a major contributor to its success. Marshall McLuhan, the medium is the massage. The poet, the artist, the sleuth, whoever sharpens our perception, tends to be antisocial, rarely well-adjusted. He cannot go along with currents and trends. A strange bond often exists among antisocial types in their power to see environments as they really are. This need to interface, to confront environments with a certain antisocial power, is manifest in the famous story, The Emperor's New Clothes. Well-adjusted courtiers, having vested interests, saw the emperor as beautifully appointed. The antisocial brat, unaccustomed to the old environment, clearly saw that the emperor ain't got nothing on. 
the new environment was clearly visible to him. It has an artwork as well, a hand drawing of a seemingly large emperor who uh, seems to have no clothes, really, if you look at it. Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity, David Allen. Updating Your System, The Real Trick to Ensuring the Trustworthiness of the Whole Organization System lies in regularly refreshing your psyche and your system from a more elevated perspective. That's impossible to do, however, if your lists fall too far behind your reality. You won't be able to fool yourself about this. If your system is out of date, your brain will be forced to fully engage again at the lower level of remembering. This is perhaps the biggest challenge of all. Once you tasted what it's like to have a clear head, and feel in control of everything that's going on. Can you do what you need to maintain that as an operational standard? The many years I've spent researching and implementing this methodology with countless people has proved to me that the magic key to the sustainability of the process is the weekly review. The idea that every week you'll go back and review your systems, see what worked, See what didn't work and fix it. Good things. Check it out. Getting things done. On Bullshit by Harry G. Frankfurt. In Eric Ambler's novel, Dirty Story, a character named Arthur Abel Simpson recalls advice that he received as a child from his father. Although I was only seven when my father was killed, I still remember him very well, and some of the things he used to say. One of the first things he taught me was, Never tell a lie when you can bullshit your way through. This presumes not only that there is an important difference between lying and bullshitting, but that the latter is preferable to the former. Now, the elder Simpson surely did not consider bullshitting morally superior to lying, nor is it likely that he regarded lies as invariably less effective than bullshit in accomplishing the purposes for which either of them might be employed. After all, an intelligently crafted lie may do its work with unqualified success. It may be that Simpson thought it was easier to get away with bullshitting than with lying. Or perhaps he meant that, although the risk of being caught is about the same in each case, the consequence of being caught are generally less severe for the bullshitter than for the liar. In fact, people do tend to be more tolerant of bullshit than of lies, perhaps because we are less inclined to take the former as a personal affront. We may seek to distance ourselves from bullshit, but we are more likely to turn away from it with an impatient or irritated shrug than with a sense of violation or outrage that lies often inspire. The problem of understanding why our attitude towards bullshit is generally more benign than our attitude towards lying is an important one, which I so leave as an exercise for the reader. Harry G. Frankfurt from On Bullshit from the Princeton University Press, the world's first scholarly work on the word bullshit. And that's not to say that we don't have big books. We got a keyboard. And underneath that, we have The Making of Star Wars. So big, I can barely heft it up uh, to the sky. Behold, what a feast of visual images and stories from the original Star Wars back when it was just called Star Wars and George Lucas just wanted to make movies before the dark times. Before the Empire. I've got art books. We've got a companion guide to the Scottish National Gallery, which I brought back from Scotland. And we've got Botticelli to Brock, masterpieces from the National Gallery of Scotland, uh, which I brought back from San Francisco. <laughs> so 
I saw them here and I saw them there. So that was fun. And we've got skyscraper books, but I'm going to save those for later. Checking out the price of Bitcoin. I'm sure it's changed a lot in the last five minutes. The price of Bitcoin is down 1.49% in the last 24 hours, with a last of 9,069. 69. Ah. A high of 9,300 and a low of 8,993. That's $1 for 11,025 Satoshis. I'd buy that for a dollar. Volume was low, but it's Sunday with 3,000 or so Bitcoin trading hands. The market continues to lean long with 78% of the market heading that direction. Checking out our top stories. It's the price, the price, and the price. Why all eyes should be on the $9,000 Bitcoin price level this week. A sideways week for Bitcoin will not come as a surprise, but Bitcoin is still poised for a big move soon as it hobbles inside a tightening range. Ooh. Spiritual reflections on the Bitcoin halving. That sounds nice. Bitcoin price. Why today's weekly close is crucial to avoid the 80s. Sorry, the 8,000s. We need to avoid the 80s at all costs. We can't go back there, duck. We just can't. And finally, the price, the price, the price, the price, the price. But we have a solution for the price for you because today is Sunday. And that means it's time to check in with the seer of seers, prognosticator of prognosticators, the world's only magic eight ball that is capable of predicting the price of Bitcoin. Kneel before ball. And now... Will the price of Bitcoin be higher this time next week? Here we go. We're giving it the shake. It says on Wikipedia, you probably shouldn't shake the eight ball. Could cause bubbles. Bitcoin could cause bubbles. Here we go. Higher or lower this time next week. We're drawing some triangles. We have the triangle action. Phil Jackson has been called. My reply is no. My reply is no. The ball is bearish, bearish ball. So there you go. The ball is bearish. What are you going to do? I mean, that's rough. I mean, I'm going to have to check out, uh, I'm going to load up the chat here, see what's going on, probably uh, cause some echo. But yes, the ball is bearish. Uh, how are you reacting to that chat? Uh, you're buying, you're selling. Uh, there's a, obviously the ball does not give financial advice, uh, but the ball is bearish. Bam. Chatted. And now, what we're really here to talk about today, corporations, right? Corporations. I had some interesting comments on Twitter, as I often do, and uh, I thought about them for a day, as many don't. And uh, I thought about corporations, and I thought about taxes. I thought maybe we should talk uh, just a little bit about, like, what is a corporation, right? Well, a corporation was founded by the Dutch, right? And it was to serve the state. Uh, you would do something like open up a trade route. And this is good for people. They get spices, right? Spices are sweet. You get to, like... Have your meat last longer, taste better, you can salt it. Major preservative, right? Major the difference between eating jerky at the end of the year or not having any jerky, right? Spices, major key. Uh, other things like building projects, like bridges and dams. Dutch have lots of dams. So that that's what a corporation was, like originally, right? Now what is a corporation now? It's totally different. Like, it's a person. It's usually about stockholders, right? Uh, people have stock in the corporation. They want to make money. 
makes uh does it make value? No, it makes money. Value is slightly different than money, right? The the old corporations more would make value, and it has rights. That's a new thing. We're not really trying to talk about that today. The main thing we're trying to talk about today is uh, making money. And then there's the government. The government gets its revenue from taxes. And they use that to, you know, do stuff. <laughs> Everyone's getting super mad now. But anyway, we're just talking about very basic things here. Government, revenue from taxes. At this point, it's a democracy. So that's good. So the main thing that we really want to focus on today is different types of corporations. So there's there's a bad corporation. Spelling counts. There's a good corporation. And there's an ideal corporation, right? So a bad corporation would, like, just pay no taxes at all. They would, like, pay nothing. They would, like run away with the money. They would have bad products. They would hurt people. Bad to the employees. You know, these are like the hallmarks of a bad corporation, right? A good corporation would pay its taxes, right? Like neutral, right? Kind of. Now that's that's where we're going to get into today's rub, right? Um, should corporations pay more taxes? Should they pay less taxes? Should they pay all the taxes, right? Pay all the taxes. Pay some of the taxes. Pay as little tax as possible. And uh, that's pretty much where we had our discussion on Twitter. I, is we weren't we weren't so much for focusing on like good to employees, good to customers. We were focused on this idea of, of the taxes, right? And he said that I couldn't have an opinion as a Bitcoiner other than that the corporation should pay as little. Oh, that's an interesting button. Let's undo that. But other than that, the corporation pays little tax as possible. Oh, come on. And that the uh, corporation pays little tax as possible. And that I think this has to do with what we were talking about earlier, that corporations are for stockholders and to make money. And that this is, uh, the main thing here is if this is 100% or not. If the corporations are only here for stockholders and to make money, destroy the environment It's et cetera, right? I mean, it doesn't, you uh, don't have to conserve. You can only run it for one round. Like you could run it at extreme efficiency or not extreme destructive efficiency, right? Like anything is possible, right? Whatever the system will bear. Of course, that's a uh, classic Sinclair Upton Sinclair, the jungle, right? And the jungle was really about stockyards and meat packing factories. It was about worker conditions. But it really became more about the octopus and the corporation as the problem. Uh, he showed how an all-powerful corporation such as the railroads could really get out of control. The idea was that corporations no longer serve the people. And, and you can see this with a lot of current corporations, like corporations where, like sugar water, like which is delicious, it's wonderful, but bad for you. Cigarettes look cool, bad for you. Stuff like that. I mean, alcohol makes you dumb, bad for you. 
People love to be dumb, though. It's a pretty sweet deal. I think it has an O in there, though. Alcohol? Ah, well, whatever. Fix it, spell checker. Uh, but yes, when you have a corporation that doesn't serve the people, you have things like The Insider, the movie where the cigarette companies were doing nicotine fixing, right? You just wanted to have a cigarette with tobacco, the plant from the tree. And they were like, no, 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 we can chemically enhance this to make the nicotine hit even better to make you more addicted to our brand of cigarettes and to the idea of cigarette smoking. So it's no longer your choice. You want to have a plant named tobacco in your family. It's now their choice of how much tobacco. The same thing, uh, the sugar water. If we could find a way to make it taste better, if we could put bubbles in it, uh, if we could can it, whatever we can do to make the sugar water more convenient and more available than water and more attractive than water, advertising, messaging, propaganda, right? These are the tools that we have available once we break free from this original idea of the Dutch idea of a corporation is serving the state, right? And the state being uh, the people, right? At that time, the Dutch had uh, recently had a revolution and the burghers, the people who were kind of the mayors and the people of the town, uh, the citizens had overthrown the king. So there was no more king. And uh, that's why they set up corporations. That's why they did this. This was a way of post-king organization uh, that just spread to many other people and many other countries. So let's talk about Amazon, right? Amazon. Is Amazon a bad corporation? Do they pay no taxes at all? Do they run away with the money? Are they corrupt? Maybe. Like they certainly, they try. They try this. They aspire. Like this is a goal for them. Do they have bad products? Like, no. Do they hurt people? Not necessarily. Are they bad to their employees? Yes. Now, on a good corporation level here, what we would hope from Amazon is we would, our hope is that they would be an ideal corporation, right? Our, our goal is that Amazon should improve. So when we see Amazon do stupid things on Twitter, we feel the need to write back to them and to make fun of them so that they will improve. And if Amazon was to improve, then they would pay all of the taxes. They wouldn't look for ways to get out. And, and that's where it is, is like, what is acceptable, right? Like, is it acceptable to you to like funnel the money through Ireland? So like international, like accounting process, is it acceptable uh, to report income differently through subsidiaries? I know I can't spell that. So yeah, I'll just say subs. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what is accept? And there are levels to this, right? There's levels of what you would find acceptable. And uh, that's all I'm saying is that we can have goals for Amazon and we can hope for better for them and we can hope that they would pay uh, the actual taxes that they should pay. And if they did, that money would go back to the government who would use it as revenue so that they could do stuff uh, that we vote on with the democracy, right? So when they don't put the money in, then the government doesn't have any revenue and then they can't do stuff. And then we have this democracy where we vote on things that are not useful. Meanwhile, the corporations continue uh, to get more and more rights and uh, get more and more power. So uh, just let that happen. Uh, but that's what I wanted to talk about basically there. No, 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 not the news. We can't do the news yet. It's Sunday. Let's talk. Let's talk sport. So I was in Scotland. I went to this building. There's a huge construction project going on in the back of this building. Uh, they're at least quadrupling the size of this museum. It's going to be gigantic. It's going to be great. It's in Edinburgh. That's how you're supposed to say it. And uh, there's great stuff. Here's some right here. Looks like some uh, religious artwork. Very popular, of course. Oh, here's a Cezanne. Very nice. Like the colors of that tree. Oh, what's so fun about this book and the other book is that I saw some of this stuff in San Francisco. 
Ooh, there we go. That's the. This is a Dutch church. Uh, they've taken all of the icons off of the wall. Uh, so you can see it looks very bare and minimalistic. Uh, this is because they were uh, iconoclast, right? They were breaking the mold. They were breaking the icons. Uh, they were moving them. And they just wanted to worship a more plain, uh, plain way. So I definitely saw that both in San Francisco and in Scotland. So pretty cool uh, traveling artwork. And then uh, at least for a time, a uh, traveling person. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Let's try the other one. Let's see. This one's even bigger. Remember, we have to have big books for big book day. Looks like a Raphael. That's a Raphael. I was like, Ninja Turtle. <laughs> one of the Ninja Turtles. Not Michelangelo. <laughs> and Donatello is a sculptor. So, <laughs> process of elimination. Ninja Turtles. It's Raphael or Leonardo. That didn't look like Leonardo. Oh, I, I really like this one. This is a haunting piece. She just really looks at you. Uh, it was funny when I went to Scotland. This one was kind of roped off. Uh, they were putting up a new exhibit. And uh, you could only see her from around the corner. So I had to take pictures and buy postcards. Uh, this is John Singer, John Singer Stargent, 1856 to 1925. And she is Lady Agnew of Lochnaw. So there we are. Scottish lady. Here's a Pierre Bonnet. Bonnard, perhaps. Get you some culture here on Sunday. Free art. So William Dice. Oh, I like this one. This is the uh, Thomas Gainsborough. This is John Campbell, the fourth Duke of Argyle. He's a powerful Duke. Uh, I like this one. I like the hunting pose, the incredible pelts. Uh, look at the, the face there, the force. Kind of a George Washington-looking uh, fellow. <laughs> I almost said MFR, but uh, I don't know. Don't want to speak down to the Duke. Scottish Duke he is. Is Dukedom. This is a Naismith, Prince Street, with the commencement of the building of the Royal Institution. Uh, so this is actually, pro I think this is the building that these are housed in, in Scotland today. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. You can kind of see how it goes down to that little valley there, and that's where they're building the expansion of the museum as well. So it keeps flipping back to the same pages. Someone has uh, folded this book a little. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, here's a Picasso. Kind of a mess. Kind of a messy one. But there you go, a little big book day uh, to get you started. Makes a sound. Uh, before the horror that is the news. What's been going on today in the news? Let's check it out. Enhance, enhance. Uh, Scott Dworkin says, I'll never forget, I'll never let anyone forget that he went golfing while Americans died. Never. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, Governor Sisliak says that he hasn't forced people to wear a face covering in hopes that more people would end up doing so voluntarily. Uh, face cut. The headline below says, Face coverings not mandated to avoid rebellion. Uh, so interesting idea here that by not mandating it, people could just make their own choice and it wouldn't be such a forced issue. Uh, there's different ways to go on that. I really feel in this kind of a health crisis, you kind of have to mandate it. I mean, we mandate we mandate people to wear their seatbelt, and this is pretty much the same kind of thing, except that the seatbelt protects other people. So that's a tough one. You also don't want a rebellion. Bring out your dad. Bring out your dad. Classic Monty Python. I'm not dead yet. Yes, you are. <laughs> 
I'm fine. I'm going to go for a walk. Scott Dworkin. The GOP would have removed Obama if he golfed today while Americans died. That tells you everything you need to know about Putin's Republican Party. That's rough. Joe Biden. The hard truth is that Donald Trump ignored the warnings of health experts and intelligence agencies, downplayed the threat COVID-19 posed, and failed to take action needed to combat the outbreak. It's one of the greatest failures of presidential leadership in our history. Interesting idea here. Renewable energy may be switched off as power demand plummets. However, if they hooked up Bitcoin miners, they could continue harvesting the free energy, solar, um, hydro, wind, etc., uh, could just be stored in Bitcoin, uh, would be cheaper than batteries. Nice. Uh, here's a classic photo from King Kobe. Uh, this is Mark Carpellis defending Mt. Gox from hackers. Uh, he said it was found in his shared photos of an old WhatsApp chat. Uh, pretty interesting stuff over on uh, Kobe's Twitter lately. Uh, he says he might write a book. Uh, I'd probably read it. And uh, there it is. The president should just allow official photos of him golfing. Uh, a long telephoto shots always have the aesthetic of a Bigfoot sighting. Uh, so there it is, the photo you're not supposed to see. Look away. Look away. Don't see it. Don't see it. Uh, he was golfing yesterday. He's golfing today. Uh, we're about to crack 100,000 dead here in the United States. Uh, good day for some golf. Uh, Biden would be working, not golfing, no doubt. Uh, they also got video of him golfing. Uh, looks like a, a different day or time. He's got a different outfit, at least a different hat, the white hat. And uh, here we go. A GOP chair in Texas says coronavirus is a hoax made up by Democrats. Then she asks everyone to take off their masks, and they all start hugging. So, all right. Good idea. That's going to last. Again, you can't fight evolution. You just can't fight viruses this way. Uh, we've all seen it in the movie. These are the people that wanted to get back in the water uh, when Jaws was still out there. They're like, yeah, forget about Jaws. I'm not afraid of Jaws. Uh, so there's more close-ups of Trump golfing. Uh, what a terrible decision. You could just not do it. It would be so much easier. Uh, it says here, the president of the United States shouldn't be golfing during the height of a pandemic. If you're an elected official who disagrees with that, you should resign immediately uh, because you're terrible. Meanwhile, COVID-19 is undoing years of progress in curbing global poverty. Uh, it's triggered an unsurprising reversal of gains on combating poverty. The post-pandemic world will have to redouble its efforts in order to improve economic security. And this is another one of those no-brainers like universal health care and universal basic income, where if we provided a floor, a base level, from which people could build from, more people would be successful, the GDP would go up, we'd all make more money, it would be a more humane world. Uh, but we're not there yet. We're getting closer, though, I think. It's a fascinating story from Weird History. Early uh, paratrooper drops included transporting them on top of the airplanes, and then they just slid off the wings. <laughs> so look at that. You would, you would fly on the outside of the airplane. or actually looks like they start out inside, and then they kind of climb uh, to position, and then they slide right off. <laughs> looks like fun. We're going to war. Yay. Of course, the, the problem is, yeah, you don't want to be in the propellers. That's the main problem there. You don't want to be cut up in the propellers. Uh, but here's the tweet that led to my earlier discussion. Uh, big talk from Amazon. I think they sound scared. Maybe it's time to give benefits to their workers. Time to pay all the tax, not just the least they can get away with. And that's where this discussion comes from. We really need to decide if they should pay the letter of the law if it's 30% or whatever it is, the way that the rest of us do with our taxes. I never go to the IRS, hey, I'm, I want to pay less of my taxes because I used a complicated tax structure 
and uh, move my money around, so I want to pay less. No, it, it doesn't seem to work. It doesn't seem to work for a normal person. Uh, it shouldn't work for a giant corporation. And that's probably what Biden was saying. But, of course, Amazon uh, took it badly, and they seem triggered here, right? They seem like they're having uh, some sand in their pants or something because they say right here, Joe Biden, we pay every cent owed. You spent three decades in the Senate and know that Congress wrote these tax laws to encourage companies to invest in the U.S. economy. We have 500,000 jobs with a minimum wage of $15 an hour across 40 states. Assume your complaint is with the tax code, not Amazon. And I think they just should have shut up. <laughs> they shouldn't have said anything at all. This is a horrible message from Amazon policy. Uh, obviously, this is the lawyer branch. This isn't the main account. The main Amazon account just wants you to buy more stuff. They don't ever say anything about uh, politics and so on and so forth. And I don't know where they think they're going to go if they're not going to be with Joe Biden. Uh, the president's pretty much publicly declared war on Amazon, uh, attacking them because Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post, which the president doesn't like. He's gone so far to attack the post office, which is one of the main ways that Amazon delivers goods, which is pretty much their business, right? Uh, meanwhile, they've uh, taken the knife to Joe Biden early, uh, publicly, embarrassingly. Uh, so I just thought it was a ridiculous statement from a corporation, kind of showed extreme hubris. And uh, while I'm sure Amazon didn't break the law, right? Amazon used tax shelters, they used complex uh, you know, accounting, all these other kinds of things uh, to do this, to have this brilliant scheme so they could pay less taxes, so their shares could go higher, so that the greed could continue. And uh, this just deprives the government of revenue, deprives them for the ability to rebuild bridges and so on and so forth, which they don't do. And then we have that dam collapse the other day uh, because we have bad infrastructure. Like the infrastructure allows for more commerce, right? The idea that Amazon, when they were a small company, was able to use the post office and they were able to use the roads and the mail uh, to become a big company. <laughs> That's what happens here. We have this infrastructure and the revenue can go to the infrastructure. It can also go to the national defense of that infrastructure, right? A lot of people like defense spending. So very strange from Amazon. I uh, thought it was fun to give them a little bit on Twitter and then to have hopefully a productive discussion here where you guys can think about maybe you think uh, the corporation should always pay the least amount of tax. You know, F the government, F democracy, F the people. Uh, I hope they have no revenue. I hope they can't rebuild any roads and streets and that everything crumbles and collapses and you can't have two-day package delivery anymore. Uh, so that's not great. Other people might think they should pay a fair amount of the tax or they should pay the letter of the law on the tax. And it really just depends what kind of corporation they want to be. Here they're, they're bragging about $15 an hour. <laughs> they're bragging about the least that they can pay people. I guess maybe it's a lot. I don't know. I hear horrible things about the workers in the factories, and I hear horrible things about the workers in the office at Amazon. Uh, I read the book, The Perfect Store, I think it was, the Amazon book or the eBay book, or the Everything Store, something like that. And, uh, yeah, Jeff Bezos is a, a hard, hard driver. Uh, people, they think of working at Amazon as like running a sprint. They're like, I'm going to do that for three years, and then I'm going to go somewhere else and have a normal job. <laughs> it's not a long-term profession. They burn you out, uh, which is, again, another way of treating people, uh, which comes back on you. Uh, so, yeah, I took a picture of the Amazon tweet in case they take, took it down. Uh, so don't worry, we've got that. Shout out to Davi Barker, who's still selling his Bitcoin pin. Uh, you can buy it at his new website, theblacksale.com. And he says the Bitcoin pin is easily his best seller ever. Ah, the new normal in Las Vegas. There's a family of tourists. They all have their masks on in their Las Vegas picture. Oh, Dad, remember the time that we went on vacation during the coronavirus? Yeah, we, we risked our lives in a pandemic. That was a good idea. <laughs> there you go. Wider shot in the picture. Sorry. Yeah, we, we risked our lives so you could go gambling and we could see Vegas when it was totally closed down and no fun at all. 
Ah, well, at least they're wearing masks. Uh, but I do think this is a good point. Uh, my brother brought this up the other day. We were watching that video of all the people in line at Nordstrom's Rack, uh, which was also here in Vegas. <laughs> and uh, what a funny kind of person you have to be where uh, you wear a mask, yet you go shopping for discount clothes. You're like, I understand there's a pandemic out there, but I still really need those deals. It seems like the other people make more sense where it's like, I don't believe in the pandemic or whatever. I don't believe it's as strong as this, or I'm a pandemic severity denier, very popular position. And uh, you don't wear a mask at all because you don't want to protect other people and you don't want to share. I guess you want to protect other people from the potential of you having it. You don't care if you get it and you want, uh, you want discount clothes. Yeah, I'm, I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm definitely going to get one of those boards you can draw on so I can start drawing these Venn diagrams for you. Uh, because what a unique kind of person. These people here, uh, they don't want to infect other people, but they want to go on vacation, and they want to have cool pictures, but they don't want to take the masks off just for the photo, yet they're clearly a family, so they are probably quarantining together. So if they really wanted to, they could probably take the masks off, put them in their pocket. Well, then, again, you're exposing contagion. You know, you could put it on your hands. Uh, you're not probably very good with taking the mask off and on. I mean, they could be holding the masks in their hands. I think it would be a better picture. I don't know. But there it is, a, a sign of our times. Strange. Meanwhile, Stephen King writes, at least 96,000 dead from coronavirus. That's enough to fill two huge stadiums to capacity. Trump is playing golf. What can you even do? <laughs> He's playing golf. It's quite the photo. Trump talks to reporters May 15th. I know it's a, it's a bad still image and everything, but he really does look deranged, don't you think? Like... Just the shape of that angry mouth. Uh, tomorrow's New York Times today. And let me see if I can find one of the high definition ones. I think this guy. Yes. Okay. So this was uh, the New York Times, uh, the latest cover. Uh, incredible graphic design work. Uh, that they're doing over there at the New York Times. Uh, at first, I had thought this was all, uh, but now I'm told this is 1% of the deaths associated. So this is 1,000 people, 1% of the death, and they did a one-sentence uh, obituary uh, for all 1,000 of them. So uh, Joe Diffie, Nashville Grammy-winning country music star. Robert Lee Amos, Expert marksman and firearms instructor. Stephen J. Huber. Loved creating perfect smiles. Don Wan. Sports fan who loved Purdue. Alan Mayer. New York City. Songwriter of I Love Rock and Roll. Mary Roman. Shot put champion and fixture in local politics. So really, really incredible work here uh, from the New York Times. And uh, that's only a 1,000 of them. And uh, there's one of these other tweets here. I think I might scroll by too fast. But it showed you uh, what it would look like if it was uh, all of them. And it was uh, unbelievable. We'll find it later. Uh, but, yes, just a beautiful headline from the Times. And meanwhile, you know, side by side, the 100,000 dead headline and the president is golfing. Uh, looks like some quick turnaround here uh, from the uh, MidasTouch.com. Let's take a look at this, see what they've got going. I'm going to be working for you. I'm not going to have time to go play golf. Believe me. You may ask about the uh, coronavirus, which is very well under control in our country. We all love golf. There are times to play and there are times that you can't play. It sends the wrong signal. When you're president, you sort of say, I'm going to sort of give it up for a couple of years. We're going to lose 75, 80 to 100,000 people. They're running into death. I see that with the doctors and the nurses. And it's a beautiful thing to see. Oh, 
All right, Trump golfs, you die. I'm gonna be working for you. Trump I'm not golfs, gonna... uh, you die. That's tough. And, and what's so funny about that is that it's obviously avoidable, right? Uh, even if you were a, a big Trump supporter, let's put on our Trump supporter hat. He knows not to do this, right? All of his tweets are evidence that he understands how media works, right? How graphics work. Uh, when there's 100,000 dead and it's a big number, you know, and the Sunday shows, they're going to talk about it all weekend, right? That's what we do. It's Memorial Day weekend. Uh, but I'll bet if I go downstairs, they'll have Meet the Press on TV and Face the Nation. They still do the Sunday show. Somebody works. And you know they're just going to be picture after picture of you golfing, right? You think that you're going to hide it. And look here, he's waving to the camera. You got to wonder, is that like an, an uh, I'm caught wave or is that a I'm proud wave? But yes, it's just so obviously avoidable, right? If you were a Trump supporter, you'd be like, this is so obviously avoidable. Like, unfortunately, you know, you've been elected president, so you're going to have trouble keeping up your golf game for the next four years. Uh, I know they have one of those incredible simulators in the White House. He can hit golf balls into the thing and they'll fly on the the video game, you know, it's pretty good, right? I'm sure it's not the same. Uh, he can go for walks and stuff. There's all kinds of ways to get outside. Uh, but he knows not to do this. He's tweeted against Obama and made Obama look bad, right? Now it's very easy to do the comparison, and he's golfed way more than Obama, as well as his golf always costs us more money uh, because he golfs on private courses uh, that usually he owns, then he pays himself for golfing on his own course, whereas President Obama used to golf on military golf courses and uh, other free courses, mainly military, if you look at the percentages. Uh, but yeah, just crazy, crazy golf stories today. Uh, meanwhile, uh, an entire stadium here full of people, the Texas Longhorn Stadium, one of the largest college football stadiums in the world, this many deaths, they died alone. No family to hold their hands, no goodbye hugs, and Trump is playing golf. Uh, so again, this is a self-forced error, right? This is like when you're playing chess and you lose a piece and it's your fault, right? All you had to do is not move there. You wouldn't have lost the piece. Interesting story here from the New York Post. How baby Al Capone pulled off a $23.8 million crypto heist. And a really interesting story, the backstory here uh, to Michael Turpin's phone hack. I don't know if you guys have heard the story, but uh, Michael Turpin, he was a big Bitcoin promoter back in the day, uh, also into uh, voxels, a lot of other projects uh, as a PR company. And apparently, although I don't suggest this and have never had this problem myself, at some point, you could control $20 million or so with his phone, right? I don't know why someone would need this, but this is a feature he had on his phone. Uh, so naturally, he was simjacked and he was hacked. Uh, but it turns out that this group of hackers led by this rich kid, his mom's a daughter, uh, were hacking him just for fun uh, to take his money. They already had lots of money. They already had lots of stuff. Uh, once they took his money... Uh, they seem to buy even nicer stuff and go out even more. He lived in a $1.3 million home uh, with his mother. Uh, the suit uh, that is now suing him asks for damages to be trebled as well, suing for $71.4 million. Uh, the reason that he's caught is because he was talking. Uh, he got in a fight with someone, then he threatened them, uh, saying that he was worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And they, then, of course, he could buy hitmen and all these kind of things. So, uh, crazy story. Here's the exact quote. Allegedly threatening an acquaintance. I could buy you and all your family. I have $100 million. Crazy story. Uh, but shout out to Michael Turpin, who's continuing to fight it all the way uh, a lot of the courts and so forth don't even really understand what SIM jacking is, uh, the way that you can call the phone company, talk them into changing the phone number, 
Once you've changed the phone number, you can reset all of their accounts that are tied to that phone number. And if you're very unlucky or were perhaps previously lucky and suddenly having a bad streak, the $20 million that you could control with your phone, because that's a feature you need, uh, could be stolen in an instant uh, to some punk little kid. So there you go. Crazy story about uh, who they're calling Baby Al Capone. Although I don't think that's going to stick. Uh, but good luck with that. Crazy story. We've got the uh, example that we were talking about yesterday. Uh, Jeff Sessions was a, no a noble warrior for Trump. Uh, he did anything he was asked except unrecuse himself from a case he was clearly involved in. If you're involved in a case in the legal sphere and you become part of a political campaign, you have to recuse yourself. That's how it works, right? You don't want there to be a conflict of interest. Other than that, uh, Sessions loves the president, toes the party line, uh, salutes at all the flags. This is how Trump treats hardcore, far-right, frantically partisan supporters of his own ideology. Instead of telling... So, here it is. This is how he treats them. Jeff, I don't even want to do it. You had your chance and you blew it. Recused yourself on day one. <laughs> like it was a legal issue. Uh, you never told me of a problem. There was obviously a problem. And ran for the hills. You had no courage and ruined many lives. The dirty cops and others got caught by better and stronger people than you. Hopefully this slime will pay a big price. You should drop out of the race and pray that super liberal... Doug Jones, a weak and pathetic puppy for Nancy Pelosi. Chuck Schumer gets beaten badly. He also voted for impeachment based on zero. Disgraced Alabama coach Tuberville will be a great senator. <laughs> That's funny. If you don't read the uh, period there, disgraced coach. He's already the ready there. So yeah, and what did Sessions say to him? Mr. President. Alabama can and does trust me, as do conservatives across the country. Perhaps you've forgotten. They trusted me when I stepped out and put that trust on the line for you. Remember, Jeff Sessions was the first senator to endorse President Trump. He legitimized his campaign. He went from being a reality TV show star who doesn't like Mexican people running for president to endorsed by a senator reality TV star who doesn't like Mexican people running for president. It was an epic and wonderful day. Meanwhile, uh, Aaron writes saying, it's like a deleted scene from Idiocracy. <laughs> there are riding motorcycles around the White House grounds uh, because they're reenacting the movie. I don't know. I don't know. the re Oh, they got the flag. The movie was better. They were drinking while they were doing it. Also, nice to see there's a... looks like all the Secret Service in the background are wearing masks. Uh, none of these people who are up here on the grounds taking pictures are wearing masks. It doesn't look like any of the bikers are wearing masks. So, uh, spread... Oh, and Trump's up there, too. I didn't see it at first, but yes, you can see in the balcony. Uh, that looks like... Yeah, that is President Trump is clapping at the motorcycle uh, parade. Wow, this is really an idiocracy moment. So, yeah, if you haven't seen Idiocracy, it's a great time uh, to go check it out. You can get it on iTunes. Uh, so, yes, just powerful headlines. Uh, Trump continues to accuse Joe Scarborough of murder over an accidental death that is not a cold case. As Aaron says, it's fucking insane. He's monstrous, and we're numb to it. Uh, so, again, this is a false story. He keeps referring back to it as if it were true. Uh, looks like I don't have the tweet, so that's that's just as well. It says the tweet is unavailable. Uh, that's just as well. Let's see. Oh, here we go. A blow to her head, body found under his desk, left Congress suddenly, big topic of discussion in Florida, and he's a nut job with bad ratings. Keep digging. Use forensic geniuses. It's just unhinged. And this is why he's going to lose his Twitter account. Right? This is why Twitter is going to take his account away. You can't go on Twitter, which is, again, a corporate platform owned by a corporation, 
and accuse someone of murder without having any evidence, without being factually true, with it already being proved and no longer a case. So really a bad look there, really disgusting. Uh, lower than we've gone, but we're still looking for lower. They say it's become clear how Republicans might try to overturn a Biden victory, and they're starting already. The, the gross tweet of the day today was uh, that the president doesn't like mail-in voting. Uh, once again, with no evidence at all, he claimed that mail-in voting was fraudulent using blah, 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 blah. It's not true. There's no evidence at all. It's not true. And yes, they're going to do that, and then they're going to say the election's false because people voted through the mail, which they've done for decades, 20 years in Oregon, absentee balloting in every war. Every single war, we had absentee balloting where soldiers vote by mail. So good enough for soldiers, good enough for America. This is how they're going to try to overturn the election. He'll just claim the results are fraudulent. Get ready. It's going to be an exciting 100 days, and then the 20 or so after that, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, Biden got this ad out really fast. It's a pretty fast turnaround, huh? That, that's right. That is the footage from this weekend. You know, you know, he doesn't have to run again, right? Like, if he didn't want to run again, you could choose a different candidate. Doesn't have to be this guy. Pence could run. Oh, here's a funny uh, cartoon. Uh, the Ethereum roadmap. Uh, you can see them kicking the can down the roadmap. And that Vitalik is just jumping over the thing going after Ethereum 2.0. Uh, that's pretty cool. We're getting uh, political cartoons in Bitcoin now. Excellent. Chris Wallace pours cold water on Trump's mail-in voting lies. This is from Fox News, right? Wallace, there is really no need, no record of massive fraud or even serious fraud from mail-in voting. When people get their ballots and mail them in themselves, there is no history of fraud at all. So none at all. Let's hear Chris Wallace from Fox News. Vote by mail is the best system that we have. It's the best possible system. It is not fake. These are lies. We're not going to go to uh, uh, voting by mail. Lie. Uh, voting by mail is wrought with uh, fraud. False. And abuse. In the case of uh, Nevada, where they want to send out thousands and thousands of Already did. ballots, and then they're going to send them back. Who knows who signed yep, the ballot? Just like mail. President Trump in the battleground state of Michigan yesterday doubling down on his stance against mail-in voting, as you heard. Doubling down on bullshit. A pandemic success story at a Ford manufacturing plant. The factory switched from building cars to ventilators to help supply hospitals during this crisis. Joining us now is those of Fox News Sunday, Chris Wallace. Good morning, Chris. Morning to you, Ed. Your thought about the president's uh, visit to the battleground state, big picture, but specifically this issue of mail-in voting has gotten his critics pretty exercised. Well, yeah, I, you know, I've done some deep dive in it. There really is no record of massive fraud or even serious fraud from mail-in voting. Uh, it's being carried out in Republican states. It's being carried out in Democratic states. There's no indication that mail-in voting as opposed to in-person voting tends to favor one party over another. If anything, it tends to favor Republicans because the people, now we're talking about outside of pandemic, who historically have tended to vote most often by mail are elderly people, people over mm -hmm. 65, and they tend to vote more Republican than Democratic. So, you know, have there been some cases? Yes. And there is an issue sometimes with what's called vote harvesting, where instead of mailing in your ballot, yeah. uh, that, that you'll get people who will go into a community and vacuum up, collect all the ballots, say they're going to take And those in. were actually Republicans the in Florida. Is that so Republicans in Florida harvested ballots, ballots. From neighborhoods that they think are going to vote for the other party. We've seen that 
uh, in Republicans in Florida. There was a big case involving a Republican in Florida. who did that, and it helped a Republican win the election. It was so serious they had to have a new election. It's happened sometimes in California. But when people get their ballots and mail them in themselves, no history of fraud at all. No history of fraud at all. No history of fraud. No history of fraud. So, yes, this is ridiculous. I was tweeting about it again today. Uh, for 20 years since the stolen election of 2000 and the stolen election of 2004, I've been rallying for vote for mail and watching it succeed time and time again in Oregon. And it's just disgusting to see him go against vote by mail. He's got no chance at all. Doesn't make any sense, especially to old people. You think they'll just turn. They'll vote against him. Uh, they're not just going to stand for that. They've been voting by mail forever. Richard Feynman writes, teach your students to doubt, to think, to communicate, to question, to make mistakes, to learn from their mistakes, and most importantly, to have fun in their learning. And this show is all about fun today. That's why we've got big books, so big I'm going to move the microphone. That's the size of this book. Uh, this is The Making of Star Wars. It's a big book. It's kind of an expensive book, uh, but it's worth it. It's got all the pictures. The inside you can see. Well, let me see. If you really want to see it. I'm going to have to uh, we're gonna remove the dust cover here uh, so I can get a better grip uh, so that I can get you guys some pictures of behind the scenes, the original Star Wars. This is what things used to be like. Real extras, uh, real scenes, uh, not just everything on a green screen. Here's the shot I was showing before. It was a truck, and I think they're going to transform that truck into one of the Jawa vehicles. Uh, it's pretty neat. You can see stuff in these books about in the Empire one, oh, here's a big crew shot. Look at all the people who worked on Star Wars back in 1979, 78, something like that. Maybe even earlier for the original Star Wars. Uh, ooh, there's a neat one. You can see the X-Wing flying in. You can see the model that they made for the Death Star. Uh, all the little uh, spokes and everything, the little circles. Oh, here we go. You can see the actual size of the Jawa carrier. Look at that. It's a, a large remote control car. <laughs> and what's nice about these books, they also have lots of essays about the film, uh, stories from people. Here across that, you can see Tatooine. You can see one of the large uh, war elephants or woolly mammoths or whatever they are. Dewbacks, <laughs> something like that. But yes, this is a Star Wars a large print, a large book uh, for Big Book Day. want to make sure you guys got that. Oh, they have some of these storyboards. Remember last week we uh, had Star Wars storyboards. So you see that's like a throwback, tieback, connect the two together. And uh, here's the shot from the opening. There's the beginning of the movie. Pretty awesome. Uh, you can see what it was like back in the old days. They had actual models, and then they would film them. <laughs> it's not like now, everything's all computers. So, Star Wars, A New Hope, Big Book Day. We've still got more big books. We've got a couple more about skyscrapers. And we just might reach the end of the news. I don't know if we're going to make it. Jim Gaffigan, comedian, writes... Rest in peace, all-you-can-eat buffets. It won't be the same without you. And it is true, the all-you-can-eat buffets in Las Vegas have mostly closed. Uh, the dream is over. <laughs> so uh, no one wants to eat food in vats kept next to other food. That just sounds gross. The president called one prominent female Democrat fat and another a skank tonight, and it won't get nearly the coverage of Joe Biden saying something dumb, because the bar for Trump is subterranean, 
and we've normalized having an ignorant monster as president. Uh, Trump uh, golfed on Saturday, and he's golfing again today, uh, Sunday. He's golfing both days. A Hong Kong protest over proposed national security law met with tear gas. No surprise there, uh, but sad story from Hong Kong. The European Union is about to unveil the world's greenest coronavirus recovery package. And uh, this is what you can do with a little bit of forethought, right? If you slow down and you think about what you're going to do next, this is what you can do. The United States, we bailed out our corporations. They took us for a ride. They took all the bailout money. In the EU, they're proposing spending 60 billion euros for e electronic vehicles, 91 billion for retrofitting buildings, 10 billion for renewables, another 10, building for re 10 billion for renewable and hydrogen infrastructure, 30 billion for green hydrogen. Uh, you have a choice on how you come back from this pandemic. Uh, you could come back with the same, or you could come back with something new. It looks like Europe is going to be trying renewable energy instead. Hong Kong demonstrators are being prepared to go to jail, protesting their loss of freedom. Uh, already people are being lost. Uh, here's a video of Hong Kong. See the police are falling back. They're outnumbered by the crowd. The crowd is throwing a couple of things. Is this the police that drops his rifle? There's a policeman that dropped his rifle. They're pulling back. And it looks like that right there. He's got the tear gas out right there. He's spraying it. So we're starting to spray some tear gas here. And they're retreating back. So get ready for more video like this soon. As the Hong Kong situation continues to develop. Uh, most likely not for the better. Well, I certainly didn't have China invades India on my 2020 bingo card. But here we are. India has technically been invaded by China. This is the Indian ITB P base at Finger 4, the north bank of the Pangong Zhao Lake, Ladakh, India. China has occupied this base, built bunkers, and even planted a Chinese flag. This is undisputed Indian territory. This is happening right now. Uh, so again, another way to take advantage of the pandemic, uh, if you're a government or a corporation, uh, just go ahead and invade, take over a new military base, and grab some new territory. Uh, different leaders, different times. Or you could go golfing. Golfing is good. Here's the police in Hong Kong. Oh, there's the one that dropped his rifle. You can see him dragging it back. Seems attached to him. Yeah, pick up your rifle. Expect more of this. And the police are horribly outnumbered, at least for now. Leave your house for a haircut. Return home with coronavirus and a possible death sentence. Welcome to America under President Trump. Two hairstylists with coronavirus served 140 clients while symptomatic. That's right, they had fevers. And they kept working anyway. Why would they do that? Because they're desperate and they have no other options. And they're not getting any assistance. And maybe they just don't care. The odd thing about reporting on the coronavirus is that the non-experts are supremely confident in their predictions, while epidemiologists keep telling me that they don't really know much at all. Uh, the Dunning-Kruger Full effect. Dunning-Kruger. Uh, here's a scene uh, from the Ozarks, Missouri. Uh, current death toll in the United States, 97,414. 
uh, incubation period, two to 14 days. And here's the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri today. Get down. All right. Infecting yourself with that virus. Yeah. Let's see, go to the wide view. There you go. Now you can see more people. But yeah, just a packed pool outside playing music. I love the American flag in the middle. That has a real idiot. Like, I really, I, we could make our own idiocracy this morning. We have this one. Uh, we have Trump with the motorcycles. Uh, we should really cut this together. I mean, we'd be set. Let's see more about Trump and the churches. I like this uh, Winnie the Pooh. But how will we know if our pandemic guidelines work? Asked Piglet. The world will think we overreacted, said Pooh. So even when we're right, everyone thinks we're wrong. Welcome to public health, said Pooh. And Piglet understood. That's right. How do you know if it works? People think you overreacted. So when you're right, even when you're right, everyone thinks you're wrong. More from Hong Kong. We're going to see lots more of these videos. Here's the tear gas. Uh, this is right after the canisters have been fired. Boom. Most of those tear gas canisters were probably made in the USA, sold by weapons companies. As human rights expert Sharon Hom writes, this blatant move signals further acceleration of Beijing's efforts to dismantle the one country, two systems framework that was intended to protect the rule of law and fundamental rights and freedoms and to ensure a high degree of autonomy for Hong Kong. Beyond Hong Kong, what's also is at stake is the threat to the entire world of a non-accountable regime that dismisses its international commitments and ignores international standards. Uh, much like with the coronavirus, if you don't give the cashier days off, if you don't give him health care, he's going to infect your whole family and you're going to die. If we don't stop them at Hong Kong, they're going to keep going out and out. We saw them invade India today. That was pretty shocking. A regime that dismisses its international commitments and ignores international standards. Get ready for this. Keep an eye on China. They've got all those military bases, bases in the Pacific uh, for a reason. And uh, the Associating for Association for Computer Machinery, ACM, a uh, group that a lot of us belong to in college, uh, is making strange decisions today. They say, face masks cover up a significant portion of what facial recognition needs to identify and detect people, essentially threatening the future of a multi-million dollar industry unless the technology can learn to recognize people beyond the coverings. So a lot of people freaked out about this, but I remember uh, before the pandemic really took hold here, uh, we talked about this issue on the Bitcoin group because it was already happening in China. Uh, people couldn't access their homes because their doors were designed for facial recognition. Obviously, people couldn't open their phones because their phones were designed uh, for facial recognition. So uh, it is indeed a problem, um, but the way they they phrase it here got them in a lot of trouble because it's a problem threatening the industry. Uh, as Orr Dunkelman writes, and this, kids, is the reason that we must teach ethics and law to computer science students. Otherwise, they complain about life-saving measures interfering with technology, and that's before the ethical considerations of that technology. Excellent point. Uh, this is what the future of flying looks like. Uh, this is a, a 
UAE Airlines. This is a uh, Arab immigrants immigrants uh, airlines, one of the nicest airlines in the world. This is the one uh, Casey Neistat used to fly on with the uh, fancy private seat and such. Uh, but this is the future of flying, and it doesn't look so good to me. And uh, this would be the the best possible uh, flight situation under Emirates Airlines. Testing for specific destinations. Enhanced cabin cleaning. Thermal scanning for fever detection. Microbiobial shields at check-in. Social distancing measures. We've got it all at the airport. Dun, 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 dun. Complimentary hygiene kits for all passengers. Face masks, gloves, antibacterial wipes, and hand sanitizer for extra protection along the journey. And I can see it already. Safety measures at immigration and transfer desks. Uh, there's that old joke from the Naked Gun movie where they're wearing the giant condoms. Uh, social distancing at waiting areas. Staged boarding in small groups. It keeps going. Look at all the details. Modified in-flight service for health and safety regions. reasons. Look, they're all wearing masks. Dedicated cabin service attendant for onboard hygiene. So a whole extra job there. That's good. Your health and well-being is always our first priority. Oh, that, that and the money. The money's important too. If you didn't have the money, well, we wouldn't care about your health. So don't, don't say that part. Uh, but yeah, that's what flying looks like in the future. So it looks pretty horrifying, really. Um, more video from the Ozarks. Uh, this was the pool. Get down, get funky. All right. Spread that virus. Big Petri dish. Uh, you're just all spreading the virus. So trouble, 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 toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Uh, here are blood, blood stains left on the floor where a protester was hit by a pepper ball and arrested by police. According to Stand News, the wound was so deep it exposed the bone. For those writing today's headline, please make it clear that it was state violence that occurred on the streets of Hong Kong today. Uh, so they did draw blood. Uh, this is what the uh, New York Times would look like. It only has 1% of the death. It has 1,000 of the one-sentence uh, obituaries. Uh, this is what it would look like if it showed the accurate full uh, one for every 100,000 dead. Uh, here's video of the Hong Kong police firing pepper balls at protesters. So tear gas and now pepper balls. Looks like a paintball gun. Look at look at the way the press has changed. I remember on the Umbrella Revolution, it was a big deal that we had James wear a helmet after he had trouble, of course. Unfortunately, not before. Uh, but yeah, look at that. Full helmets, full vests. Uh, the press is being taken care of, at least now. Uh, but again, they're just documenting uh, they're just shooting people with these pepper guns. Uh, so that's how you kill democracy. That's how you end freedom right there. And that's not a hypothetical thing like everyone's worried about with the whole coronavirus and being forced to wear a mask and so on and so forth. This is actually happening in Hong Kong right now today. And uh, this is just the beginning. It's going to get worse. Imagine historians looking back decades from now in the midst of the worst pandemic for a century, and as the death toll reached 100,000, the President of the United States took a break from golf to mock the weight of a black woman who was being considered by the Democrats for vice president. Mm. 
Took a break from golf is the best part about that. Took a break from golf. Uh, so the problem with Facebook advertising is it's so damned effective. Uh, look right here. Uh, they'd almost got me, uh, except that I don't have $500. Uh, but if I did, uh, I would definitely want this uh, fancy tool from Astro Haas. It's uh, called a free writer. And it looks like a typewriter keyboard with an e-ink screen uh, that just saves your data to a little card and can send it through Wi-Fi. And basically, it's like a computer you could write on uh, without of any of the computer parts. So it's kind of like an electronic typewriter. So looks cool. Like it. They also say they're making a smaller one later. It's going to be $300. Still too much. Uh, but I like the idea. Shout out to Max Hillebrand. He's going to be speaking to the Athens Bitcoin meetup. Uh, sounds like remotely. And he's going to be telling them the story of how he closed his bank account and lives on only Bitcoin and how and why to use Wasabi Wallet, CoinJoin, and upcoming Bitcoin privacy improvements. Check it out. May 26th at 8 p.m. in Athens. It's going to be on the Greek blockchain YouTube. Check that out. The Hellenic blockchain and Bitcoin meetup. Shout out to a girl called Char. She says, I may never go back to not wearing a mask in public. It looks cool. I get gendered correctly more, protects against disease, and fucks up facial recognition. Why stop? I think kind of the same thing. I, I haven't been to a casino wearing a mask yet, but I think it would be the strangest feeling. Uh, I Every time I go to, uh, well, I haven't been anywhere, uh, but if I did go anywhere and whenever I do put the mask on, I do feel like I'm getting ready to rob the bank. It has that uh, Wild West bandana feeling, you know, you know, like cover up your face and then rob the bank. So that would be a bad feeling to have in a casino. I would not want to spread that feeling. Now, this is pretty amazing. Uh, I didn't know what to say about this. This is in uh, Sutton. This is in the United Kingdom. And this is a line. Uh, wait for it. There it is. You can see it in the distance. This is a line for the drive through at McDonald's. Uh, I guess it just opened up. Uh, they have less restrictions. And maybe you haven't been able to get your McDonald's fix in a while. Or you just want some hot food cooked by someone else. Uh, but I would never wait in a line that long. And I'd never wait in a line that long for McDonald's. But there it is. <laughs> There's the McDonald's. There's the turn-in. And it uh, looks like they're, yeah, that's it. <laughs> McDonald's. Uh, you can go back to driving now. Crazy, huh? Uh, so even in uh, the United Kingdom, uh, people are excited to get back outside and spread that virus. And uh, they're going to McDonald's. A bad choice under any circumstance. And uh, another thing I learned just a few minutes ago is that Siri is in mono. Fascinating, huh? She only came through the left channel. Uh, when I was listening to an iPhone announcement that I saw on my board. Uh, so pretty cool. Hey, we made it. We made it through the news. Uh, if you guys made it this far in the show, give yourselves a pat on the back. That's the sound of me patting myself on the back. Uh, because we made it through the news. We survived. Uh, the president goes golfing twice while the deaths top 100,000. That's just That really sums it all up, doesn't it? It really just ties it all together with a big bow. You're just like... I vote for the guy who didn't go golfing when the deaths were topping 100,000. Like, I don't care who you are. Anybody but that guy. Uh, so now we got a couple more big books. We've got big high rises from 2018, 2019. Uh, I brought this all the way from Frankfurt. Uh, this came from the Skyscraper Association there and is some uh, pictures of incredible skyscrapers, the best new skyscrapers. They give out awards uh, every year for the best ones. Uh, let me show you some of my favorites. Uh, sadly, some of these I've seen, some of these I haven't seen. This one I want to see. I think it's uh, Thailand, and uh, it's magnificent. You can see the square blocks. It kind of looks like a Tetris building. Uh, just insane uh, that they built it and that it's safe and uh, all those kind of things, which it must be, and all those. And there must be a reason for it, too. Uh, people want offices like that, uh, some kind of thing. Uh, but, yeah, it's a real building. And it's out there. Let me see if I can find some of the other really crazy ones. Uh, there's some that are just slightly crazy. Oh, here we go. This is a, one of those environmental buildings. It has all the stuff growing on the outside. 
it's going to have vines and it's going to produce anti-carbon, you know, oxygen, carbon dioxide, <laughs> whatever plants make. Uh, but yeah, what a cool building. This is the Asia Hotel. Uh, due to extensive planting, the site now comprises more than 10 times the amount of greenery it had before the start of construction. Uh, so isn't that cool? It's a green building. Uh, literally, it really is. It's a Got green stuff growing all over it. How cool is that? Uh, so obviously I had to get this incredible book and bring it home. It even had a skyscraper from San Francisco in it. So that was pretty neat. At least I've seen one of them. <laughs> so uh, there's another kind of crazy shot of that blocky building. Isn't that nuts? Huh? So that was Best High Rises 2018-2019. Chicago from the air. Big book. Very big. Giant pictures. Oh, I want... There it is. Okay, so this is the one of the car park buildings. It's a big round building with a car park on the outside. What a cool shot that is. Let's see if I can get a, a closer... There you go. You can see the whole skyline there. Uh, just the size of this. That's why it's fun to, to buy big books. Uh, they're really hard to print. And then later on, uh, you can just look at things uh, with your own eyes. You don't have to look at a screen. Uh, you can look at an actual picture of something. And it's right there on the paper. Oh, look at that. They're not social distancing there. <laughs> All spread out. Lakeshore, pictures of boats, marinas, they got everything. Where's the skyscrapers? More pictures of boats and marinas, come on. Oh, there's what it used to look like. No skyscrapers there. So I don't know, pretty interesting stuff. Chicago from the air. If you like big books, like big buildings, got to get some of these. And we got one more. It's just called skyscrapers. Big book. Big pictures. Let's see. Here's a Tokyo City Hall in Japan. Here's the Chicago Tribune Tower, a reference to the other book there, a connection, right? Skyscrapers in Chicago, book about skyscrapers in Chicago. Let's see. Oh, the Empire State Building. Classic. Got to have that in every skyscraper book, right? Oh, yeah, we could do uh, call-ins if you guys want. If you know the phone number, you could call in already. <laughs> That's one, let's see, one five one nine, right? Call us now at 1-518-600-1949 or on Skype at World Crypto Network, all one word. Uh, let me find the chat. See if the chat's going. Paste. And there you go. Everyone has a chance to call in. We're just uh keep this going. Maybe five more minutes or so, not that much. Uh, left in the Sunday, here's the Landmark Tower. It's a nice looking building. Very square. Good top. Frankfurt had a lot of uh, skyscrapers because it's the home of the European Central Bank. It's a very monetary place, Frankfurt. Uh, so it was fun to visit. It was uh, one of those contrasts, right? It was very clean in parts. And I would say to you, the uh, skyscrapers are very clean and the downtown is clean, but I'd also say there's parts of it that are dark at night and that you'd want to avoid where people were openly shooting up drugs in the street. So uh, that's not so good, uh, but that's the way it is. Oh, here's the, I think this is the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa in uh, Dubai. So there it is. We showed you uh, Emirates Airlines, how you can fly these days. And then we're going to show you a building in Dubai. Pretty sure the tallest building in the world, the Bertonis Towers, it says, at least 
until they build a taller one. And then they'll have to print a new book, Skyscrapers. That means you could probably get the old book on sale, <laughs> which is probably where I got that book. So we've had another exciting day on the Thomas Hunt Show. Checking out the price of Bitcoin. Looks like it declined a little while we were talking. I saw 8800 for a while. Uh, let's look at it overall. The price of Bitcoin is down 2.54% in the last 24 hours, with a last of 8942 a high of 9300 and a low of 8859 that's one dollar for eleven thousand one hundred and eighty four Satoshis. Sounds like a sweet deal. Volume has increased quite a lot, uh, rising from around three thousand to now around four thousand. Still low for a weekend. Uh, usually we see around ten thousand Bitcoin trading hands. Today only four thousand and forty nine. A uh, market continues to lean long with seventy seven percent of the market heading that direction. We talked about the president and how he's going golfing. What a great weekend. <laughs> so thanks again to everybody for joining us. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and a share. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe down below. Hit that bell for notifications. And I uh, hope you guys have a good Sunday. Get out there and read some books, even if they're not big, even if they're normal books or Kindle books or books on your phone. Uh, it'd be a fun day to get out and do some reading, uh, do some social distancing, uh, wear your mask if you go anywhere that uh, has too many people. So, Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>